So I'm just going to tell everyone that they can, um, that you're not on this. Am I going to see the things popping you'll up? See, you'll see some people show up. Hey, hey! I never really do live builds specifically because live builds tend to be live videos after like a certain t time period once you kind of cover the topic you're covering they get a little bit bored but I know that if, I've kind of said I kind of casually mentioned a few different times that I would do some live video of this Techno EB 410 build and I know that this buggy's got a lot of anticipation I don't have a microphone so it's probably a little bit hollow out here but what I do have is the, the general manager here at Rossby, Greg Hodap, behind the camera. So I can't see what you guys are saying, but what we're going to do is I'm just going to work on this build a little bit, and Hodap's going to read the comments, and if you guys have questions and stuff, stuff like that, we'll try to answer it. We're not going to do this long. This is only going to be 5 or 10 minutes, maybe 15 tops, but I guess let's get cracking. So if you see any comments, just uh, I guess let me know, all right? Fair enough. People are probably going to ask about durability and stuff like that. You can see it come right no, through my you screen. Want, do you no. want to watch this? What's that? No, you no, no, you're going to watch right okay. here. That's all. We won't do it real long, but I know that people had asked, and I'm sure they've got some questions, and so we just want to do our best to answer them. What's the quality of the plastics like so far? Very, very good. It's a lot like, the quality of the plastics is actually very good. It's a lot like, if you've never owned a Techno 8 scale buggy, it's it's high quality. It's, it's it's good quality plastics for sure. What about the pistons? What pistons are in the kit? Haven't got into the shock bag yet. They look like they're molded, and I'm pretty sure that from what I've read already, that this thing's going to have a larger diameter piston. So there's a good chance that the pistons you already have probably won't work. But I'm there's no doubt in my mind that companies like Shell and Avid and others will have machined pistons with a variety of shock combinations or a variety of like hole combinations, and probably in no time flat. This piece, this this D block, it looks to me like it can go on pretty much either way. So initial impressions of the overall build so far? Very good. Very really good. I'm I'm pretty stoked. I mean between you and me, I'm I'm impressed. They did tell me that there's like they Daniel when he sent an email, he's like, hey Jason, there's a couple of uh couple of gremlins that you could run into. He's like, he told me what he thought they <laughs> <He's>, what he... <laughs> He told me uh, he told me to look out for a couple things. Like I guess there was some flashing in a couple of spots, and one of the steering, like maybe the steering ball cups or something. I can't really remember, but he told me to take a look, and and we will. You know, we'll we'll pay close attention. So how did the diffs go together? Are you to that point yet? You got the yeah, the diffs are done. Yeah, the diffs it went together good, really good actually. Yeah, I was I don't know why, but I kind of had it in my head that the diffs were going to be like super. Just I kind of had it in my head that I thought the diffs were going to be. I don't know, just like super heavy. I don't know why. The diffs are actually, because a lot of people had asked me, they're like, hey, is this thing going to be good for 13.5? And I, that's a super fair question. Man, look at that. I mean, Steve Harris says he's going to be by soon. Steve Harris, you know what? <laughs> you, you got nothing for me. Steve Harris is fast. What color are you going to paint this one? Let me think. Let me see if I can find some of that on the shelf. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think we're going to hit it with some good old... PS1, you know what I mean? Is there any other color? We just painted this PS1 today, you know what I mean? Oh, what's that? <laughs> so here's kind of a cool feature, you guys. <clears throat> Some manufacturers send the car with the pills in locations other than center, but it looks like this car was designed so that so far, at least in the back, all of the pill locations have been center. So if you ever wanted, if you ever wondered, like, hey, what's the stock setup with a manual setup? So far, it's been for like the C and D block, just center, center. So we'll be, I guess we'll look up here in the front and see if it's the same. I'm cheating from looking ahead. Jesse Granite says, "Come down to Roadrunners RC Club Sunday." He can't handle this. Okay, so in the front. Okay, so in the B block, it's it's dot down, and the A block, it's. So in the kit, the A, C, and D block are all center dot, and the B block will be dot down. So that's pretty easy to remember. And uh, we can't be going over there on Sunday because I'm probably going to be heading to, well, I don't want to tell everybody where I'm going to go shoot the video at. <laughs> 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 I don't want everybody to know they'll be showing up. 
All I can tell you is that in this review, we're gonna run this car on carpet and on clay for you guys because I wanna do the most thorough review we possibly can. I haven't put out a ton of content, so I wanna make sure the content that we do put out is awesome for you guys. So that's definitely on the agenda. Cody Turner wants to know how much you lift, bro. Bro, you don't want none of this, Cody? <laughs> Come on, man. He's always, got a, he's always starting stuff, you know? I like Cody. Me too, I love that he did that. If anybody that knows Cody Turner, ask him how many times he dropped his last M12 off the stand at IERC. We were all, we were at IERC for like, I don't know, like the gun smoke or something like a couple years ago. And Cody Turner sets his radio. Keep in mind the rail for the driver's stand is probably like 10 feet above the track at least. He sets his, driver, he sets his radio right on the stand and like takes his shirt to like clean his glasses. And he gets like clean his glasses, like, what the hell, my radio's gone. 10 feet down, it's laying on the track. <laughs> so he walks down there to pick it up and it still worked. I think he actually won his heat after he dropped his radio 10 feet out of the ground. So, so what fluid, uh, what weight's in those diffs there? The kit is just 7,000 in the rear and then 15,000 front and center. And so we just built it right, right with the kit oils. How's the audio, everybody? You guys hear this okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious about that myself. Bueller. 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 I like sandwiches too. You like sandwiches? Oh, goodness. Oh, uh, the audio's great. Good. Thank you. All right, cool. Look at these hexes. These things are. Uh... Let me see. Check that out. Let's see if they can see it on the camera. What do we got here? That's nice. What kind of shindiggery do we have going on over here? There you go. Do you think there will be a two-wheel drive techno? I asked those guys. I asked those guys this very question because I was kind of surprised that they chose to compete to start off by competing in in this market because it's kind of a smaller segment of the market. But Daniel Lewis kind of gave me his sly grin, which is which is code for who knows. And the reason I say that is because the two-wheel market is viciously competitive. AE has pretty much the Vulcan death grip on the two-wheel market. TLR makes an amazing product, and that's probably my, truthfully, the TLR car is my car of choice at the moment, just because of how gripped up it is in the back. It just, the associated car is really kind of, it's, it's a super, super fast car, but it tends to be a little bit on the aggressive side, or, or if you if you miss the setup, it tends to air on the aggressive side. With the TLR car, I think airs on the other side. It airs on the side of having a truckload of rear grip. But man, getting into the two wheel buggy market is no joke. And these cars, the man, these manufacturers don't talk about this, but this has been looked into. I've been to Taiwan. I've been overseas. I've been to Asia. It's not cheap to tool one of these cars up. It's it's well into the six figures to to tool up one of these cars, especially from scratch. Keep in mind a car like the B6. There's probably a bunch of metal parts and other parts that have carried over from other platforms, whether it's outdrives or, or which I don't think actually are, is an actual actual part, but like things like diff gears, idler gears, hardware, ball studs, things like that. There are certain things that carry over, but when you tool a car from scratch, especially as an eight scale manufacturer, it's tremendously expensive. And my guess, this is just a guess, my guess is that the reason Techno chose to tool a four wheel buggy is because they've spent the better part of the last you know, five, six, seven years really understanding what these four-wheel platforms can and should do and how to get them to do what they want them to do. And so now that they've obviously got a handle on their eight-scale program, now they're you know, jumping into you know, to the 10-scale to the market. So it's hard to say exactly, but, but I do know that their eight-scale stuff's been on point. I've, I've, been, I've been fortunate enough to be friends with Ryan Lutz for a while now, and. I wouldn't consider Ryan my very best pal, but anytime uh, he, he has a question for me, I'm happy to answer it. Anytime I want to chat with him or have a question for him, he tends to pick up the phone. And so back when he drove for Durango, I would ask him questions and he was always very honest and candid with me about his equipment. And when he first came to Techno, he, he just raved about the Truggy. I mean, he just told me, he's like, you know, he's like, my buggy, he's like, I, got, I need to work on the setup, but the Truggy is absolutely magnificent. And then, like, I don't know, maybe six months or a year ago, I had been asking him, like, hey, so how's the, you know, the techno stuff? It's been a couple of years. He's like, Jason, our stuff is really, really good. And that wasn't him trying to sell it or just be, or, or even be a paid driver. That was just one buddy talking to another, telling me what he thought of his equipment. 
So what do we got here? Did this thing? So a question here asking, uh, how can the Techno run a 15,000 center while the B64 is usually 200 to 500K? What decides the huge variation there? Well, first of all, I'm pretty sure the B64 comes out of the kit with like 10, 100, 10. Uh, there's, there's so much. I can't even begin to, to touch base on all the things that are actually factors that go into this because I, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I just don't know. But I can tell you that how far forward the weight is, how much bind in the drivetrain. There's a lot of different things that affect what oils you wanna use. My, I have no idea, I haven't driven this car yet, but my guess is that they're probably going a little bit more conservative on the center diff oil because if you go too heavy on the center diff oil, the car gets loose exiting, it's a little bit aggressive. And so it's probably a safer spot to start from with a, with a thinner center diff. I, ha I have no idea. There's absolutely no information floating around because this car just isn't available yet. I'm sure in the future we'll, we'll find out quite a bit more. We're doing a lot more talking, a lot less building than I thought. Build that thing. I know, right? I'm used to just sitting here with my headphones on or the radio playing and just crushing it, taking my time getting it right. Easy build so far, goes together nicely. Yeah, yeah, the build's been really good. No complaints. I don't know that I've ever, like I built my EB40, my EB4, my, my EB48, right? The very first one ever, I built that one and had a really good experience with it. I built uh, an EB48.2 for my buddy. I built an SC, their, their short course truck, which was also a pretty good build. I built, my EB48.3 when I did the review, I don't know that I've ever really had a, a, a quote unquote bad techno build. You know what I mean? They're just, their kits tend to be organized as good or better than any of the others. So I'm not, it's not that I don't want to praise these guys, it's just that I'm just not surprised. I'm not surprised that the build has been as good as it is just because I've had such a good experience building the other, the other kits. Any other questions? Lighter than the B64D? We will know soon because as soon as I get this thing built, we will put put it on a scale. But right now, I just don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. That would have been an interesting thing. You know what we could have done? It's a little late now, but we could have brought the B64 in. I thought I, I, thought I brought it back. We could have brought the B64 in and swiped like some of the diffs out of it and weighed it and stuff like that just as a comparison for everybody but it just didn't cross my mind honestly today i just wanted to get that body tool finished up and i wanted to pull this this and then get this car built at like the, pretty much the the top priorities for the day dave goss wants to know if you're racing tonight right man tell dave goss i just might see him there what up goss dg you should be here helping out today man what's up don't be a stranger. All right, we got some got some hardware here. Let's see if we're doing this right. What's the gearing for the front, rear, and center diff? They were already together. I would have counted for you. <laughs> I didn't even think to count. If they weren't already together, I would count. Sorry. Does it say in the manual? I don't think so. I don't know. Oh, here's one spot here. So. When you're actually sliding, when you're actually sliding the the out drive on, don't zoom here. I'll just pull it up here. When you're actually sliding this out drive onto the pinion, the fit is wickedly close. I wouldn't say bindy, but for some reason, right at the very end, I kind of it was a little snug, it was a little sticky, and I kind of had to push it on with my thumb. But I mean, the the overall gear mesh and stuff like that is really, really good. In the instructions, it tells you to tighten these screws down all the way till they bottom gently, then back them off a quarter of a turn. That's kind of a new experience for me. I don't remember seeing anything like that in any of the other techno manuals. And so when I tightened the screws down and they actually bottomed, I tightened it all down and I let them bottom and then I spun the out drive and there, there was no bind. It was actually really smooth and, and pretty free. And then I backed everything off like just, just a little less than a quarter of a turn and it felt like it might have freed up a touch. I don't know if that's something that's really required or not. I'll have to ask the techno guys about that when I get some time, but I don't know. But I, I'm, following the I'm following the manual as close as I can. The only thing I have deviated on from the manual to this point is I've never been a super big fan of the black grease that comes in all these kits. 
I generally use either the Kyosho white grease or the super expensive Mugen white grease, but the Mugen white grease is, I only have a little bit of it and I just didn't want to use it to build the car because I have a scale cars to work out here shortly. And I really like the Kyosho stuff. So, and it's, the Kyosho stuff's cheaper. So, so that's where we're at. So that's the only thing that I've done different from the manuals. I've just used a different grease for the O-rings and, and for the thou drives. All right. There's no, uh, looks like there's no. Anthony Reynolds, uh, he's glad you're doing this for the military folks overseas. Makes it uh, easier for them to make good decisions on kits before they buy them. Hey, man, I'm glad I. Uh... Thanks for your service, Anthony. Yeah, thank you for your service. That was, that's actually where I was going. I was going to say, hey, you know, I, I appreciate you guys watching it. I'm glad. I know a lot of people, I'm not going to get all philosophical or political on anybody, but I know there's a lot of people out there that don't always agree with our military and the decisions that our you know, political and military leaders make, but I'll tell you this, I am thankful that there are guys like you out there that are willing to go out there, and I don't care if you're cooking or, or holding the gun, I'm thankful that you're there, so we appreciate you watching, I appreciate you being over there. Any characteristics similar to a one eight scale, EV? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just the single fact, you know, it's funny. One of the things that I liked, and the last company I know of to do this was, was Durango, is the droop screws. You know, this thing actually has down, you know, they call it, you know, we call, I call it droop, screw, droop screws, but they call it down stop travel and all that, you know, down travel and all this kind of stuff. I hear people, you know, griping about it, saying, oh, it's going to wear into the chassis and this and that. And, and yes, maybe it will. But there, there, there is value in being able to modify the car's behavior quickly without having to disassemble the entire shock package and put limiters internally and or unscrew the eyelets and stuff like that. I prefer, I prefer droop screws. I just think it's a better way. I'm not saying that it's a perfect solution. I think in a perfect world, you might have like a chassis. So clearly these little wings, right? These are probably there specifically for the droop screws. So maybe in an absolute perfect world, you had hardened inserts or something like that so that it didn't wear or whatever. But the fact is, if you don't want the droop screws, you don't have to use them. You can just go ahead and limit the shocks internally. I'll be using the droop screws for the foreseeable future just because I, I, like, I like that design feature. But uh... How are those shock towers looking? They look looking pretty strong. Dude, these things are ridiculous. I mean... So, Mason Epley, when we were at Surf City, he actually had, Mason Epley actually had a carbon tower on the back. And I asked Daniel, like, hey, is that, is that in the box? He's like, negative. So it came with plastic towers. And I'll, as soon as I get these two sway bar links in, I'll hold this up so you guys can see a little bit more closely. But the shock towers are definitely, definitely beefy. The rear one that I saw from Techno the after I I think Techno's going to release their own option parts. I'm not a, I'm not a hundred percent sure. We'll just have to kind of pay attention to their website. It, it looks to me it's been a while now four or five millimeters thick. My guess is four, maybe five, which is cool. Carbon shock towers tend to be a little bit more expensive or or considerably more expensive than the plastic ones. So here's the here's the rear shock tower. Actually, you got that caliper out still? Is it floating around? Here, I'll tell you guys right now. Let's put this to bed. Just, we're using it in inches? For a second, I was. How dare you? The rear shock tower is eight millimeters thick. Is the front one around here somewhere? The front shock tower. <laughs> this thing is ridiculous. I mean, seriously, 10 millimeters thick. So eight millimeters for the rear shock tower. <laughs> I swear to God, like I can just see people bulldogging other cars with this car. If this car is as durable as it looks like it's gonna be, you don't wanna piss the guy off that's driving it behind you. That's all I'm saying. The ultimate drone. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> like, oh, you didn't like that pass I put on you? He just plows through you in the next corner at full punch with a five five, you know. All right, please don't tell me to build camber links. I know that's what you're going to tell me. But a lot just... of questions of, uh, are we going to this track? Are we ever going to make it to that track? I saw Flowood. I saw 
the, the short answer, you guys, is hell yeah. We love to go racing, and that's really what we want to do more than we want to do this stuff. But we have to do this stuff so that it funds us to actually come out there and hang out with you guys. So, yes, we. I would love to get to Flowood. I would love to get to... Uh, I think it's Hobbyplex in Omaha. I'd yeah. love to get out to Race MRC in Illinois and back to Leisure Hours and Trackside in Wisconsin. I'd love to get out to Dirt Burners in, in Livonia, RC Clubhouse. We'd love to get out to the East Coast, RC Excitement and all the other tracks, Speed RC, all these places. We, we want to get out there. It's just, it just takes time. And, and to be, you know, just to be completely honest with you guys and straight with you guys, we'll probably visit the tracks that are help supporting us sooner. I mean, I just... It's only fair to reward the people, to support the people that are supporting us. So that's what we'll do. And so we will be out to a bunch of tracks soon, I promise. I just, it just takes time. I don't really, we can't really talk about the whole, the whole thing we got going on. You know, you know what I mean? That, I don't wanna, really want to talk about that. But it was once, a little off topic, but a lot of guys asking if we can go here, we can go there. I thought, no, I that's cool. No, I, why not, man? We want to travel for sure. Yeah, we want to. We want, we want to do it, and we want to do it more. It just takes time. It just takes some time. This comes Trackside, yes, that's a fun track. That's where, uh, that's where I met the Hey Hey. Hey Hey. That is where you met me, isn't it? <laughs> hey Hey. Don't, hey, don't be hating. Hey Hey, she may nay. Shebane, girl. Homie, don't play that. That's funny. I remember when I met you guys at Trackside, you and Kinwald were... You and Kinwald were, like, doing battle in a short course or something like that. I think he actually... I think, Reunited and it feels... I think you, uh... I think, I think you got him in one round and he was, like... He was pissed. Yeah, Chad Dew was, had a straightaway on us in the main and he donkey flipped at the end of the straightaway and gave it to us. Thank you, sir. Thank May you, I have Chad. another? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. May I have another? Clint in the house. BN Is he? Racing. BN. BN. Clint. What's up, BN? What up, Clint? Say hi to the Sean and your boys for us. Got to get back down here and do some do some battling. Got a build turn. Midwest up. Champs in Ohio. Is that CRCRC? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah. we need to get out there and do That's that. That's an epic race. Yeah, we need to make that happen. I'm using my uh, my traditional turnbuckle building method right now. Chapstick. It smells better and is cleaner than black grease. Falcon Hobbies in Springfield, Illinois. Gotta check that out. Yeah. We will. So many places, so little well, time. Well, we're gonna I think what you and I are gonna do, we're gonna make a trip out to we'll probably fly into fly into O'Hare and see if we can crash with Mike Nelson for a day or two and then uh, you know why we're staying at Mike's maybe we'll hit like race um, and leisure hours maybe that, that Windy City car is that track. the dirt burners area too is dirt no, burners? no what we'll do is we'll no we'll, we'll hang out in like the Illinois area maybe head over to smack track like that kind of stuff and then uh, for a few days and then maybe we'll head over to Michigan and then we'll hit that little area over there like dirt burners uh, you know, RC Clubhouse, all that kind of stuff. Terry Martin, what's up? Good seeing you last week. I'm gonna kill whoever's got my, whoever's got my ball cup reamer, or my, my body reamer. Overseas, gotta go to Germany. That's always fun, going overseas. Look at these high level MIP wrenches, these things are how, you get to that D bag yet? <laughs> We're way past the D bag, homie. Oh, you're late. Is that the one you threw at me? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a terrible human being. Just for, just for the record. This is probably like the least fun part of building an RC car. The turnbuckles. Nobody likes to build the turnbuckles. Build's going good. Yeah. Any more questions? No, I think we're going to call it. All right, boys. That's it. We did a quick live build. We got a few more chores to do here around the shop, and hopefully this thing will be done a couple hours maybe. All right, see you guys later. Bye-bye. I don't know how to stop the live. I just gotta finish.